What's going on guys? It's your man C God. Back at it once again. Sorry about last week. I actually ended up going out of town. I didn't even take my camera with me. So uh we're back again, you know, probably like a week late, but it'll be alright, you know. It's not like y'all watching this shit anyways. So this week I don't really have any content considering that it's been blizzarding outside. So pretty much I'm just gonna be Doing this intro, as you guys can see the title of the video, pretty much just going to be doing kind of like my background, like where the Sea God name came from, you know, things like that. But uh, essentially going to start off, you know, with when I started driving down to when I got my first car, when I started, you know, doing all this hood rat shit. So, fuck it, we'll, we'll start with uh, my first car right here. Let's get it. All right, guys. So my first car was a 1992 Acura Integra GSR. I paid 2,500 bucks for it. I was 16 years old, working at McDonald's, you know what it is. This car actually had a B17A1, dual overhead cam, VTEC motor. All I really did with it was just like lower it, put some wheels on it, thought I was real stancy, you know? But in reality, there was some balloon tires and she wasn't even that low. But I mean, didn't really do much to this car, did a little Exidy Stage 1 clutch, and then pretty much just traded it for my next car. And this is a 92 Civic VX hatchback, traded my GSR for it, um, pretty much same shit, it had a GSR swap in it already, so it was decent. Um, just put wheels on it, those were actually some MSR two-piece forge wheels. Kind of weak spec, you know, once again, big balloon tires. I was barely learning what the fuck I was trying to do. Ended up hitting up them steelies, you know. Everyone has to do it at least once. Ended up doing some 16-inch XXRs, and that's really where I ended up putting an inch spacer on the back. You see all that camber? That's where the camber god name essentially started. And uh, from there, I went to some 15 by 10 diamonds all the way around. Those were some thick Johnnies, and uh, from there I actually ended up putting washers instead of springs, so there was no springs on this car. It was 100% static AF. That bad girl right there, I actually had the front spindle shortened by a good buddy of mine, Juan with the Skyline. I'll put his YouTube channel in the description below, go ahead and give him a follow or subscribe, whatever. And uh, yeah, so pretty much this thing was sitting fender to lip all the way around. Um, yeah, a fun car to daily. I ended up actually building the GSR in it for a high school project to put forged pistons and rods in it and whatnot. Um, ended up blowing up. So this was a B16 here with some high compression pistons, as you can see. And ended up trading that car for this FC, which was a shit-ass vert. But, I mean, I tried to do what I could with it, you know. Ended up kind of coloring it and whatnot, making everything color matched slamming this bitch on no springs on some 17s not even washers just straight no springs so rode like a damn pogo stick but it was my fucking daily and it was a rotary ended up selling that for the down payment to cop this o2 s2000 with this bad girl i felt like driving i was ferrari or some because that shit was all red on the interior ended up getting coilovers for it 60k 326 power springs just lowered it on the stock wheels, ended up getting camber kits for the front and the rear, and some 18 by 10 and a half XXRs, as you can see there. So the car started to get a little bit stancy, and uh, this is where the real fun starts, pretty much. Ended up fitting the wheels pretty decently. I had to run spacers, of course, you know, because Hot Boy or whatever. The car was decent. I actually took it to a car show out in Wichita, and... Uh, had a blast out there with it, pretty much just uh, with a bunch of my good buddies, and we ended up hitting a car show. This was whenever I first decided I was going to tuck wheel. That was before I added the spacers in the rear, which you can see they're on there now. And uh, the quarter panels actually were really fucked, so that's why I ended up cutting them out and doing the fender flares. But that's how she sat right there, along with my dad's Trans Am. Pretty fucking nice, I'd say. That was at the car show in Wichita, Kansas. 
So I believe it was the Aspire meet. A couple of shots right there from my good buddy Thomas. Shout out to Thomas. And uh, I think I actually whip it somewhere in this video. But uh, yeah, there it was. She was tucking wheel all the way around. Static. I got it. After that, I ended up doing a functional setup on these Koenig SSRs, and um, pretty much after that, I ended up selling it and ended up getting a down payment for this 07 Hawkeye STI, which actually fucking blew up on me. Fuck me. As you can see, I ended up getting it rebuilt, forged pistons and rods, bigger turbo and whatnot. Ended up bagging it as well. Did it all by myself. First week having it done, I actually got hit and run by some guy. I had my car parked on the street, and this man came up and decided to rock that wheel right there that you can see. And, um, yeah, it was pretty sad. Like Motor blows up, finally finished bagging it, and this man right there just went and rocked my shit. And uh, it was pretty much a hit and run. I seen him do it, and he dipped out, and I finally found that fucker. And uh, as you can see, this man drove home on the rim. He gave not a single fuck that day. He wasn't trying to get caught up. So uh, after that, my wheel was exploded. So my good buddy Blake, which you've seen in the lowrider video, he actually let me borrow these CCWs that he had. You know, so I had to stun it a little bit on there. And uh, after I got my car back from the insurance, um, I was back on my American Racing Torque Thrust 2 wheels. As you can see here, I don't know. They hold a special place in my heart. I like them wheels. But uh, other than that, throughout, during this whole process, I was actually paying like out the ass for the car payment and the insurance. So it was around this point where I decided to put the car for sale on a functional setup. That way I can get rid of all my debt. And I ended up picking up this E36 and pretty much just did small things with it. Added wheels off the back, because you already know. Um, it looked pretty nice, I ain't going to lie. Uh, it needed over fenders to fit the rear wheels, so I ended up ditching these and picked up a set of VSXXs, which you'll see right here. And uh, after that, I ended up welding up the diff, you know, and pretty much just started to have fun with the car. As you can see, she fucking ripped. <laughs> Then pretty much, uh, it was just a daily. Um, I really wanted to take it to a drift event. Uh, so pretty much in preparation of that, I got everything ready so that she would pass tech. And uh, pretty much this is what sparked my desire to go sideways. Um, yeah, so the E36 right here was actually en route to the drift event. It was five hours away in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, I went with a good buddy of mine, Matt, who actually let me use his GoPro right here. for this 240 I actually had a rb20 in it and the body kit was fully molded so uh, i had to do some ghetto shit break that shit all off got a parts car took the body kit off of it all the stock bumpers converted back to stock 
ended up selling it and funded this at No, I didn't even have this FD for very long. Um, honestly, like I like rotaries, but it kind of just wasn't my thing. Uh, I ended up trading it for this 240 here, which I had seen at a lot of car shows, and it was pretty cool. I got it, and the first day I got it, or actually the second day I got it, I took it to a car show, and it actually took first place for best import. But, I mean, I didn't really build it, you know, and it also had the rear over fenders molded. Those emits were probably my favorite wheel that I've owned so far, so I mean, I can't complain really. But um, other than that, the car had a bunch of other problems. The gauges were fully digital, didn't have a speedo, which wasn't really that big of a deal. But I mean, it's just the little things, I guess. Um, other than that, I ended up selling this car for quite a bit of guap, which was essentially like the main point of trading up these cars you know pretty much just flipping cars to make more money and uh, after this i was able to buy my truck and uh, as you can see that was like the first day i got that thing as well it was pretty decent i changed out the lights did little things um actually ended up getting rid of those 22s there and i ended up getting some gigantic ass 24s which you can see there and i uh, didn't have those for very long i ended up getting some other 24s those dub cheddars there and i had those on the truck for quite a while actually but uh ended up getting rid of those as well and uh ended up on some 24 inch carbons just you know taquachando and then those are them them 24 inch carbons there that i actually got for a pretty good price um started flipping whips again i ended up with this single cab it was pretty decent there's a little 5.3 single cab uh ended up selling that made a pretty good pretty good amount of money off of it you know um after that i ended up picking up this g35 and uh, i had got this car pretty cheap it had a little bit of small issues here and there just fixed it up and pretty much sold that one as well and uh after selling this one i had enough money that i went over to denver and actually picked up this ws6 right here this was a fun car um however the goal was to have like a japanese car that was ls powered so As you can see, this is the goal. Went eight hours into Oklahoma, picked up this RX-7, finally registered it. And uh, yeah, I think I got this car for a pretty good deal. Uh, it's got a bunch of stuff, you know, forged pistons, rods, ended up picking a set of wheels for it. It had stock suspension as well, so I've done like coilovers and small things. Um, ended up selling the weds, and I'm on these weld wheels now currently, which I honestly like them. I've never seen them before, but uh, here's how she chops. The RX-7 right now, it actually is my daily driver, but I mean, the ultimate goal is for it to be a drift car. Um, I now have kind of like a drag setup on it. already know it's chop city um this is where i started my love for lowriders essentially i picked up this cutlass threw some gold datings on it a little fixings here and there you know actually sold it and uh considering that i'm trying to keep my fleet matching i traded my white crew cap for this red one had my gauges done by gauge works shout out to zach and uh yeah as you can tell a lot of this has taken place in the same house all right guys so that's gonna be all for today's video 
hopefully you guys enjoyed it it's just a little bit of uh you know like background knowledge on sea god you know what it is um but i mean if you stayed this long in the video then hopefully you actually did enjoy that motherfucker and if so don't forget to leave a like on the video if you like the content and you want to see more go ahead and click that subscribe don't forget to hit that bell notification and i mean you got any opinions any input whatever you want to get off your chest go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below other than that this is your man c got checking out i'll catch y'all later peace out eat time